question. All right, I'm saying this now. Jake Jake Bull Bull is a pussy. First of all, you're not me. Uh, no one knows who you are. He is a social media megastar. His, His name is Jake Paul. Good morning, Jake Paul. What is Gucci? Welcome to my life. Oh my God. I fight you, you train however long you want, and Logan fights KSI. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna knock you out with the right hook. It's gonna, you're gonna get knocked down the first round. Hey, boo if Deji's a bitch! That's crazy, I thought you guys were on Deji's team! Put knocked out on the canvas! Yeah, yeah, and your family's yeah, watching you! Yeah, yeah, All you're gonna hear yeah, is one, yeah, two, three, four, eight, five, six, seven! Bitch, I'm a, I'm a fucking champion! Deji's coming in wearing your face on his uh, on his crotch. What what does that mean? <laughs> Opening question. Deji's gonna have your face on his pelvis, bro. He like like after we did the face to face and like after like his fans were like, "Yo, Deji, I like you, but like you're making it hard for me to root for you." And I think he like just likes digging himself in these in like deeper holes. Like, bro, like he tweeted that and like everyone. Everyone roasted him, and I was like sitting there, like, do I respond to this? Like, do I just tell him he should like delete his Twitter? Like, no one even sees the cup. Like the cup go like that. He he has my face on his cup, but that goes under the shorts. Like, I think he just like <laughs> he's got issues. What? what <laughs> I'm I'm wondering. Yeah. What if? Uh, what if you win? And then afterwards, he has to like take his shorts off and then look at the cup. Like that's he... why I don't get like it's just weird as fuck no. in general. <laughs> like it's just super weird. Do you think the blood? That's really bad blood between you guys because you two started it all like right, before. Really, you got the beef and before it was Logan and JJ, didn't you? It was like you and Deji were going at it. Didn't he turn up at your fucking house or something like that? Or was it your old house? I think it was my old house. Yeah, he clicked. What was that like? for views? I'm um, seeing this guy. No, I mean, I get it. Like, I mean, he was just trying to hype it up. I think what Deji doesn't realize is that, like, he started this whole thing as, like, a game and, like, a joke and, like, oh, this will be fun and, like, I'll get involved with this because my YouTube channel is dying. Mm -hmm. But, like, he doesn't understand that I'm so serious about this and that, like, I have put 150% effort into every single moment of my day since learning about this fight. And I think that's where Deji, like, I, he's, he's, like, caught up in the, he's caught up in the hype. Um, you seeing all of the, the, is he training with the dad, is he not, is he with the sidemen, is he not? What are you thinking when you're watching all of that happen? I think it just, I mean, again, I don't really know like what their beef or like what the problems are, but I think it's like, why would, like, why, why would you not want to train with your brother and with a better trainer and like have someone else to push you? like? We've had, like, when we're training, like, we've had days where it's like, bro, like, we don't want to be doing this right now, but I look over and, like, he's feeling good and, like, I have to pick it up. And, like, watching him spar, I learn from him because we're both beginners. Like, there's so much benefit in, like, training with someone else. Mm -hmm. I just think it's, like, another weakness and, like, just something's not right there. Like, I, I don't know what it was, like... Mm -hmm. I could never imagine, like, I would hate training for this by myself. Like, it'd be lonely, I wouldn't work as hard, like, I don't know. When you spoke to each other on the phone early on in this, uh, you were like, come over, I've got the box and gloves, he was like, I need time to train. And What were you thinking when you were going through all these phone conversations with him? Do you think he was serious or? I never, no, I never thought he was serious. His, his big point was always like, why don't you fight KSI? Why don't you fight KSI? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think, I don't think he was serious. I, and even when he like went back to the UK and like sat down and like ma made his video, like saying that he would fight me, like I was like surprised. I was like, what, like why, why do this? And I tried to like put all of the clues together. And to me, like the only thing that I can get out of it is like, this is just like a chance for him to like revive like his brand and like his career and like his YouTube channel. I think that's what he's like mainly doing this for. And like, he kind of got caught up into it without like even realizing. And then he like kind of just went for it after that. What does this mean to your career? Cause like 
you've got, like, as you say, probably the youngest audience of the four guys in, in the main event. And the, these kids are kind of uh, like going to be surprised probably when they tune in and they're seeing, because it's not just your fights, it's all the undercard. Like, people mm -hmm. are going to really be going for this to make a name for themselves on the show. Are, they, are your fans ready for that? I don't know. I think I, I think they're definitely like they're, they're definitely ready. I think they they're excited. I don't know if they'll know like what to expect or like you know a lot of it will be like foreign territory for them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, for me like for me this is just like it's bigger than for me this is bigger than a, just a fight. And I think that's what like my fans can connect to like I I haven't had like the easiest like past year as well. Yeah, I heard that. And just like ups and downs, friends, this, that, the stuff with like the Logan situation. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like this is almost like a shot for me as well to like, to like win and like not, not, and, and just for myself, like for me personally, like just to show and like prove to myself that all of this like crazy, crazy shit happened and I was able to stay focused and work towards something and like, and defeat it and conquer it. And like really, I, I guess like, as well as like really showing people like who I really am. Mm -hmm. um, Cause you guys get connected a lot, just like the other brothers do. Exactly. But when you're in there, as much as it's brother versus brother, you're on your own and this is about what you are made of and like, when you look at, like, tell me a little bit about the last year, because I know obviously the Team 10 stuff happened. Like, what was that like when people who you depended on are now saying, I'm walking away? Like, how did that feel? It's crazy. Like, I, I it's crazy, but at some point, like, you have to understand it. But it's like, it's the weirdest feeling in the world. Like, literally, kids who I've been best friends with since like seventh grade wake up and are like, oh, there's a moving truck here, like, peace out. And they're not even, like, adult enough to, like, have a conversation with me about it. It's, like, it's such a mind, like, cluster. I've never been through something, like, so crazy. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you ask yourself the question of, like, am I approachable? Because I'm sure, like, to some people, you're a pretty intimidating bloke. You've got this whole media company around you. You're this big name. Did you feel like you left yourself open to them to be approachable or did that not cross your mind? Hundred, no, 100%. I would talk with these kids on a day-to-day -day basis. I would, I would help them with something as little as like finding a maid to clean the room because like they're new to Los Angeles and like they don't know anything to like how to negotiate a six-figure brand deal to like how to film a YouTube video to like how to deal with hate, to like being their friend. Like, do you feel like you're being used, mate? Sorry to interrupt you, but if, do you feel like that? But yeah, no, 100%. I think, I think that's, that's like... Because I've seen like, you know, you, we all watch drama and all mm -hmm. these, and like it goes back and forth. It's like, Jake Paul used me, and like you're, I used them, or whoever, like there's a lot of- I didn't make point. a single, till this day, I haven't made a single dollar off of Team 10. I've only invested my own money into it to make it successful. And they're like, oh, like, you owe me this, you da da da, like, da da da. Like, there's so much, like, back and forth, and it's all I wanted to do is create a platform for people to, like, accomplish their dreams. And a lot of them have, but they, they still don't, they don't, I don't think they realize, like, what they had until it was gone. Um, and I definitely feel like when you blow up overnight and you basically like don't have to do anything and like everything's given to you and like all of a sudden you wake up and there's like five to 10 people in your ear, like a manager, an agent being like, yo, come do this deal. Come on this deal. Like, oh, why, why are you with Jake? Like, why are you giving him a percentage? Like all he did was just like get you to a million followers. They start to believe that and they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And they like feed into it and do you regret doing Team 10 now? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't. I, I think if you think about it, if Team 10 were together right now, it would be the, we'd be bigger than the Kardashians. 
I don't know if your arse is as good as Kim's, to be honest with you, but we'll find no, out. No, I know, but... <laughs> it might be. <laughs> yeah, but um, I don't regret doing it. I think it... I think it it's still an amazing thing. Mm-hmm. I think it's just about finding, like, the right people. Like, there's obviously members who have stayed throughout all the bullshit, and, like, those are the right people. And we will continue to grow and, and find those people who are actually ready to be a part of something amazing and not just like immaturity. And I think like, as we've seen like members leave team 10, you see them all turn into nothing and make mistakes and, and fumble. And then I think they're like, Oh shit. Like maybe what I had was, was amazing. I don't know. That's just how I, that's just how I see it. And a lot of them like try to like text me and like. On the run up to this fight, have you seen people come back towards you like or whatever? A little bit, a little bit. I think. Because they know this is going to be a huge event, and if. Yeah, I mean. I think they just like again. I realized like, damn, I screwed up, especially because like, I, I was like with these people every single day. Like we were best friends. Like every single person that has ever been on team 10 we were actually best friends and i think like once that friendship is gone they're like oh, like they kind of like almost realize that and they don't they want that back or they like are fiending for it or, or something but at one point we were all best friends um so it's like it's kind of like this it's a kind of crazy uh, I admire what you try to do with that. Like I watched an interview you did with the Breakfast Club where you were saying like, you know, you look at these entrepreneurs in hip hop and you're thinking, all right, who's going to be the first dude to do that on YouTube? Why not me? This makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so moving into the fight, you're in training camp all of a sudden. You, what was your athletic background? Like, was that similar to Logan's? Did you Say do it again? What was your athletic background? Did you do oh, wrestling? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I wrestled... Um, played basketball football I was like before I moved to Los Angeles I was like 32 and four uh my junior year of wrestling um yeah I have over like 150 wrestling matches will that come in handy do you think knowing what it's like to compete in man against man a thousand percent it's there's no feeling like it in the world Mm -hmm. like going against like Team sports are great, but there's no feeling in the world like you being in a ring or on a mat with somebody and only one, like one of you has to be a loser. And I know Deji hasn't had that feeling. And I know in his head, he thinks he knows what that feeling's like. He's lost a couple of FIFA matches, let's be honest. <laughs> but, but on the day of the fight, like he's gonna know what that's like. I think speaking of like the can't lose documentary it's like how jj was the day of the fight he was just like scared like Mm -hmm. that's the feeling that deji's gonna go through and it's like inevitable it really is how did you view view can't lose because you're about to go through a lot of what you're watching in that documentary what did you take anything from it or yeah i mean when when ksi tweeted like yo Logan's gonna watch Can't Lose and he's gonna see how like screwed he is or whatever. Mm-hmm. When I watched it, I was, I was um, like, this is me being like flat out, I would tell you this like off camera. Okay. I was not impressed by how hard they were working. Um, Why not? It just seemed, it seemed like going through the motions. Um, there was no like excitement and like, and like reasoning behind it. I remember at one point, like JJ was like 40 minutes late to like a practice. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like just, just little things like that, that I picked up on. Um, and you feel like your dedication is, is above that. Yeah. Five times that. And that's me personally. Like I, Logan has a harder fight. Logan's dedication is even, even How do you more. feel about Logan's fight, genuinely? You, you feel like you can do this? 
the, there's no better person. Like I remember, I remember watching him like re- in wrestling because I was always looking up to him. Like I was always two years younger mm-hmm. and like I would, re- yeah, I was I'd wrestle I would wrestle first and then his matches would be after mine, and you just see like how much fight and determination he has and how not only that but how calm he can stay and like in crazy moments like I remember it was like the biggest wrestling match like against his biggest rival for like the third time and like the score was like 14 15 and like till the last second he was like fighting to like get these last points and like that just that just like who he is as a person and not only that but his size his athleticism his power his strength um is are you spot together no with the coach won't let us yeah <laughs> but i've seen i've seen people walk into the ring sparring him and like they get out of the ring all right yeah so speaking of logan you've you've watched him go through a, a major thing this past year what was it like being his brother and seeing uh you know, the low and then coming into this fight? I mean, I think the the difficult, the most difficult part was like how, like I, I always wanted to like respond back to the people mm-hmm. and be like, this brother. is who he is. Mm-hmm. That's not who he is. You don't get this situation. Um, you don't know like what his mindset was. You don't know how he deals with like shitty situations like the giggling and the mm-hmm. laughing and shit like that. Like I, I wanted to like respond to people, but at the same time I was like, he, he fucked up and like he does have to learn from that. And he has. Um, and I think even I, I've had to learn from him learning from that. Like he's taught me, like I've learned from his mistake. Um, what was it like that week for you generally? Like, uh, cause you, I would imagine you probably got tarred with the same, now it's like the fucking Paul brothers. Like, yeah. You know, like. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I got looped into all of it, yeah. which, which sucked because like I didn't do anything, but just by like guilty by association. And then they started bringing up like shit that I had made mistakes on in the past and like lumping it all into yeah. one. But we started this together and like, we're going to end this together. Like we moved from Los Angeles to, to, uh, we, we didn't really know what we were doing, but we wanted to be actors and entertainers and change the world. And that's how this whole thing started. Uh, and so regardless of all the shit, we just have to like keep on pushing, pushing through that. Have you envisioned what it's going to be like on fight night? Like when you're in there and you know, you're the bad guy as well. I guess everyone's going to be yeah, for the- <laughs> And to be fair, on the press conference, and I've said this multiple times, I was really surprised at how you dealt with it, the way you come out and were like, what? Like, yeah. I've had fucking fair play, mate. Like, you handled it well, but you're gonna have to handle 10, 20 times that in the ring, aren't you? Yeah, I don't think it'll affect me at all. I know, actually, I know it won't affect me at all. Um, I'm so Why focused. Is that? Again, I'm, I'm so focused, and I visualize the whole entire night from arriving to the arena till going to sleep that night victorious every single moment i've already lived it in my head and i'm i see it so clearly and like i i feed off of that energy and i love to prove people wrong like my whole entire life i've been proving people wrong and like that crowd will be proved wrong hopefully in the first round um, and that just that just like how I am. Like, are you driven by the naysayers generally? Like, and does it? Because some people it gets to them when people say they can't do that, but it feels like you and your brother both like it spurs you on. It does. People like since I since we since we started, my teachers would literally like come up to me in class and be like, "What are you gonna do when Vine dies?" You're not, oh, you're going to Los Angeles? Like, good luck. <laughs> to, to my peers being like, oh, you want to be an actor? Like, that's funny. Like, have fun in Los Angeles. We'll see you when you don't make it in three months. And that's always driven me. 
And I think that's like... Has anyone said anything about boxing like that to you? I mean, yeah, like, tw- I mean, like tweets and, yeah. and obviously like what Deji has said. Mm-hmm. He's brought up f- friends, family, my girlfriend. What was that like for you hearing that? I mean, it pissed me off, but again, I, it, it just made it worse for him. Because when we're running, I like have that video of him talking shit about my girlfriend ingrained in my head. And like when I'm running, I'm tired every morning. That shit just plays in my head and I'm just running faster. And so this is personal for you, is it? Yeah. And it just that that shit talking has made it worse for him. It feels because I spoke to JJ about this and uh, I haven't talked to Deji yet, but uh, JJ seemed to feel like you guys were a good, like, because he called you both out basically, it felt like you guys were a good, uh, the biggest names he could find to make his name off of sort of thing. He, he, he's treating this as strictly business in, in, in his approach. Do you worry that you're, by thinking about that obsession, you might get a little bit too emotional in the ring? No. No, because one thing I, I have a lot of is composure. And I think at the right moment when when Deji is seconds away from being finished, that's when the anger is going to come out and that's when he's going to really feel it. That's kind of what happened with JJ and Joe, actually. JJ was very composed and then right at the end when Joe was... That's what I'm saying. I've you're vi- seeing that anger. I visualized everything. Yeah. Like, literally... I will be the more calm fighter, and when I need to pull that out, when it's Deji's last seconds, that will come out, and that's when the fight will be over. How have your friends and family reacted to the fact that you're gonna get in the ring and do this? They've been super supportive. Um, I mean, we've, I've always watched fighting growing up, and it's kind of like in the family, and so they're all gung-ho about it. like. Mm-hmm. I remember telling Anthony, my best friend, he was like, yeah, like, bro, like you got this shit. Um, I was, I'm a little nervous for like Erica because she's like, I don't think even like she's been to like, we went to a UFC fight, but um, it's obviously like scary, like for your loved one to be like in a ring, but um, she's been super supportive and like, it's a lot, it's a lot for the friends and family as well. And like, people just around us because of how much we're training and how dedicated we have to be to this. And um, she's had to make sacrifices um, I, as well as I've had to make sacrifices. And so it's been amazing to have like that support system around me who, who's, who are all 110% about it. When you were first learning how to box, uh, did you feel like it was coming naturally to you or were you struggling a little bit? Or? No, I felt it felt super natural. I think the I think the wrestling helped a lot mm-hmm. with as, as like just movement in general. Um, but yeah, there was definitely some points where I felt stuck. Um, but just getting into it, like it was natural, and I have watched like fighting growing up, so I was able to like kind of like pick up things and like remember things that I that I had seen. Um, and like anything that I do, I, I want to be the best at it. And so I went into practice like every single day, like just fully focused. Like <laughs> I can't help but think of your fucking song when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, like I would go into practice fully focused, like phone down mm-hmm. three hours, four hours of time, like just dedicated on this. That's hard, Will, because we're, as YouTube, got the guys, we're used to just being like, being, doing everything. Everything yeah. we're doing, we've got the fucking phone in my hand, we're thinking about this, we've got managers, everyone's wanting to talk to you. So to tell everyone who would normally get your time, like fuck off of this three yeah. hours, was that just a bit of a challenge at the start? It was, it was. I think people got used to it after after a little while, mm-hmm. after like, they'd be like, oh, we have a meeting at, at blah, blah, blah time. And I'd be like an hour late and like, mm-hmm. bro, I'm training, like I could give a shit about this. <laughs> Um, so he <laughs> so just had to get used to it. What was like, when you look back at this training camp, what was there a, a, a day that stands out that was the hardest day for you where you're like, fuck, that was the worst day? Yeah, there was a day, um, 
it was very early on where I got my ass handed to me in sparring. Like, I was just off, like, I, I, I think I got into an argument with someone, like, right before we started practice. Like, I just got my ass beat. And it was like, I was like, holy shit, like, I'm, I'm bad at this. Like, I can't box. Um, and I just, like, went back, watched the sparring footage, and just, like, made a note of, like, everything that I did wrong. And the next day was, like, my best day. How honest are you with yourself? I feel like we... As YouTubers, like you're kind of used to watching your videos back and analyzing what went right. What yeah. went right. did that kind of help a little bit? Or? Yeah, for sure. I I do that with every sparring session, you know, like just watching back the footage and analyzing every single moment, and and seeing like what went wrong. And like mm. I said, that was the worst day. Like I like was I got my ass beat by someone who was smaller than me, shorter than me, weighed less than me. Oh God, that must have fucking. Yeah. Really so I was like, I was like, okay, all right. Um, but then I came back the next day, fought the same dude, and I think, I think almost like knocked him down. But yeah, I just had to mentally be like, let me get over this hump, and like that. If that's the worst I'll ever do, until August twenty fifth. I've seen some footage come out recently of you knocking this guy out the ring. There's a lot of people saying it's fake, it's this, it's that. What's the story with that? that I mean, mean, I was sparring a dude, and he flew out of the ring. Mm-hmm. He didn't want the smoke. Okay then. <laughs> um, people, people, I, I like that people are skeptical, skeptical on like whether it's real or mm. not. Um, I think it was the way he fell out looked a bit weird, but um, people, uh, it, when it's a non-fighting audience watching a sparring session, I yeah. don't know what it is, they always seem to think they're faked. Like it, it, so, um, what about Deji sparring? You, because when Deji first started learning how to train, like we all see in the way that was going, and what were you thinking when you were watching his early videos? I was on I was on tour at the time, so I was kind of just like, is this like I, I didn't know if he was like joking or not, but I, I well, found, they were real for the record. Yeah, no, I I know that because I found a video like a year before all of those of him sparring uh, KSI in their like kitchen or some shit. Mm-hmm. And like, same thing, he got hit once in the stomach and like flew to the ground. Um, but yeah, I was just like, is this a joke? Like, I really want him to take this like seriously. And I think at least he was like starting, but, and I was on tour at the time. Um, so I wasn't really even training, um, but how long have you been training for this? Really, since the day I got off tour. Like, I, I wasn't really able what to train. That? How long ago? Um, Since June 25th. Oh, so two months. Hell. I'm going to have two months of training. Is that why you there. did that Instagram video where you were like, this is me now, and you posted it a month? Yeah, yeah. What was that about? Were you just trying to get in his head? Or? I, I know it got into his head. Think about it. If there's no footage of me out there, and I put out a video July, from July 1st on August 1st, and everything I do in that video is better than what he is doing currently, mm-hmm. I know for, which I know for a fact. He's not hitting the bag as good as I am. He's not jumping rope. He doesn't have the footwork. He, he's not getting punched in the stomach every single day by a, a 20 pound medicine ball. That, in Deji's head, he's probably like, damn, for the past month, like, I haven't been training as hard as this kid. And that, I know, is in his head. All right, final question, mate. Prediction, how does this end? What, me? How does your fight end? I'd like to, I, I really, I really would like to say a knockout in the first round. I do see Deji getting into the ring and, and just running from corner to corner. He does it in his sparring videos. He goes from corner, he runs this way, he goes this way, he, he's flying all over. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, again, he's not, I don't think he's prepared to go six three minute rounds. Um, so I think maybe after he gets tired in the first round or second round and he stops flying around the ring, um, there's gonna, it's gonna be a knockout. 
like I said, hopefully it's in the first round. We'll see. We'll see where his skill level is at. There's there's almost no footage of him out there, um, but there's no way he's better than the JJ that was in the Joe Weller fight. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's just because he's a younger brother. He's is that what you're measuring him off? No, I don't think so. But I think that definitely does play into it because it's like there's no way. Deji worked harder than KSI did for the Joe Weller fight. Agreed. And I'm five to ten times better than KSI was in that Joe Weller fight. And so there's some sort of... There's got to be like... A crossover. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for coming on, mate. Appreciate it. Good chatting. (laughs) Thank you. All right.